even though Atlantis was a long time ago, all the problems from that time period were never healed. We are still dealing with the same problems and the aftermath of that disaster today. One of those problems is the astral realm continues to collapse into the physical dimension, bringing all the parasitic entities who reside in that realm, which is a lot by the way, into this reality. This is why we have such a huge entity problem right now plaguing humanity. Hi, my name is Vicki Lin and welcome to the Higher Perspective Podcast, a show about seeing the truth to heal. Every week, I explore the non-physical realms that make up most of reality to bring awareness to the importance of spiritual health, inner healing, and energetics so that you can awaken to the truth of who you are. Welcome back to the fifth episode. Today, I'm going to continue on with last week's topic of dark entities, but for this episode, I'm going to focus on a particular type of dark entity that I call astral parasites. Of all the dark entities out there, astral parasites are definitely not the worst, but even so, there's nothing good about having them on or around you. They are non-physical beings who exist in the astral realm, and they act just like physical parasites. The difference is they latch onto your aura and feed off of your life force energy instead. They take from you endlessly and provide no benefits in return. If this vampirism behavior continues on for long periods of time, it has detrimental effects to your soul and your health. If you're wondering why they do this, I explained the reasons in episode 2 and 4 so you can go back and listen to those. This may come as a surprise to you, but astral parasites are actually a widespread problem in our society today. This means almost everyone has these beings attached to their energy field or hanging around them. It's just that most people haven't really developed a level of consciousness to notice them. But if you open your spiritual eyes and you develop your ability to read energy, you will start to see that almost everyone has them. One of the reasons why so many people have astral parasites is because of the fall of Atlantis. During that time in human history, the Atlantean scientists were experimenting with very advanced and powerful technology. Technology that makes what we have today look primitive. My understanding is that they were experimenting with some kind of etheric frequency-based technology that allowed the scientists to harness energy and direct that collected power towards something and fulfill a goal they have in mind. As with all things, technology itself is neutral. What makes it positive or negative is how it's being used and that really depends on the level of consciousness in the people behind the technology and whether or not they use it responsibly. Unfortunately, the Atlantean scientists who were experimenting with that technology had a fall in consciousness, so they did not have the best intentions or exercise much responsibility in using it. I think what's important to point out is that high mental intelligence does not mean high levels of consciousness. The two are separate things. A person can have a high IQ and be very academically educated, but at the same time, that person can have low consciousness where they are spiritually immature. In our society today, I would say that is how it is for a majority of people. It's actually quite rare to find both of those developed strongly in an individual. This imbalance, though, causes people to make choices that can lead to major disasters in society. And that is exactly what happened in Atlantis. 
things got out of hand with the use of that technology. It resulted in a lot of problems, including blasting open the dimensional fields which caused the lower astral realm to collapse into the third dimension. It was a really tragic time in human history that led to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, flooding, and ultimately the fall of Atlantis. I want to mention that at one point, Atlantis was a beautiful and high vibrational civilization, but darkness managed to infiltrate into their society and it caused a fall in consciousness in many of the Atlanteans including the scientists who were handling the advanced technology. Even though Atlantis was a long time ago, all the problems from that time period were never healed. We are still dealing with the same problems and the aftermath of that disaster today. One of those problems is the astral realm continues to collapse into the physical dimension bringing all the parasitic entities who reside in that realm, which is a lot by the way, into this reality. This is why we have such a huge entity problem right now plaguing humanity. In the last episode, I went through the things that people have which attracts entities. Those things would be trauma, negative emotions, and subconscious negative beliefs. Since pretty much everyone on the planet has those, astral entities pouring in have no problems finding a host to attach themselves onto. Because these parasitic entities are non-physical beings, unless you have your spiritual senses turned on or you're sensitive enough to read energy, you're not going to realize they're around. They do create physical consequences, but The impact of having astral parasites starts subtly and gradually increases over time, so most people tend not to notice it. However, life does start to change slowly and things begin to shift in a not so good direction. For example, you might start to feel drained where you're tired and exhausted all the time. You might find your habits get replaced with bizarre things that are out of character for you. Your personality might be different where you find yourself getting easily irritated or feel angry all the time without good reason. You might also develop unexplained health problems out of nowhere or experience sleep issues like nightmares. Of course, all these problems could be caused by other things, such as the toxic world we live in today with all the chemicals in our food, water, and air. It could also be a result of EMF pollution. But since problems are usually multifaceted with several contributing factors, I think addressing them holistically including considering the potential spiritual causes, will give you a better chance at eliminating them. Having astral parasites can also show up physically on the body as a dull and gray complexion. It's not really something that can be hidden with makeup or removed with cosmetic procedures because it's part of your aura that comes through your skin. It expresses a person's genuine spiritual health and energetic vitality. Another physical sign would be the eyes of the person. When someone has parasitic entities attached, their eyes tend to look dull, flat, and dead. It's because these entities are literally sucking away the life force energy, so the person is going to look dead. Whereas a person with a healthy and strong aura who is spiritually alive and connected to their soul will have eyes that sparkle, shine like glass marbles, and they just speak to you. There are several ways you can catch astral parasites. The most common way is from other people who are infected with them. You can think of them like germs that spread through physical contact. If you become infected with a pathogen and you have a weak immune system, you're going to get sick. 
it's a similar idea with astral parasites. I consider them as a spiritual pathogen that spreads through energetic exchanges. In shamanism, entities are one of the reasons that causes spiritual illness. Let me give you some examples of how you can catch them. The first one is through physical intimacy. When you get physically intimate with someone, you are also merging your energy field with that person and forming energetic cords through the chakras. This mixing of energy means you will naturally take on and absorb all the energetic stuff that's in the other person's aura. This includes their emotions and thoughts, as well as any spiritual pathogens they might be carrying, such as astral parasites. You can't really stop this exchange from happening because energy is fluid. So be mindful of who you choose to get intimate with. Make sure you know what you're getting yourself into energetically and decide for yourself if that person is really worth the extra trouble. Because on top of your own issues that you need to deal with and heal in life, you will now have the added burdens of taking on the other person's issues. Once you take on those issues, there's no return policy and they become your responsibility to heal. That's a handful, don't you think? Another example is meditating or doing any kind of spiritual practice with others, including receiving energy healing work from someone. Again, your energy fields are going to merge because that's just what these practices involve. You are opening yourself up psychically and spiritually to the other person, which puts you in a very vulnerable state. If the other person doesn't have a clean energy field, those energies are going to be passed on to you. Even though most healers have good intentions and they do different things like cleansing and protection rituals before a healing session, the unfortunate truth I've learned is that many are actually not aware of their own shadows, traumas, and entity attachments. Many have unhealed traumas, unprocessed negative emotions, and negative beliefs imprinted into their energy field, which can be energetically passed on to you. No amount of white light will get rid of those imprints. A person needs to do inner work to heal those things. Also, since entities are attracted to trauma, negative emotions, and beliefs, if a healer has those things, it's very possible they might also have entity attachments and those can be passed on to you during a healing session. I don't think people offering healing sessions are spreading these things intentionally. I think it's more a lack of awareness and not doing inner work to heal those things within themselves. So in general, be mindful of who you choose to do spiritual practices with, including meditations. The idea might seem fun and completely innocent, but there are actually real energetic consequences you need to be aware of. As well, if you're going to get energy healing or spiritual work from someone, make sure you do your due diligence and screen the person beforehand. You could end up with more problems than what you started out with. I've come across many terrible stories of energy healings gone wrong. People receive a healing session and their condition gets worse or they develop new problems. Sadly, it's because the healer totally screwed up the person's energy system and caused more damage. I also know people who've gone to spiritual healing retreats and have come back feeling very off. They can't quite put their finger on what it is, but they know something is wrong because they don't feel like themselves anymore. A lot of times, they unknowingly took on low vibrational energies or even entities through energy exchanges at those gatherings. Another way you can pick up on astral parasites is through the land or in buildings. When you go through places where terrible things have happened in the past, 
it's very likely that entities are trapped there. Examples would be land where wars and battles have occurred, burial grounds, or places where low vibrational activities have taken place. If you're sensitive, the energy of those places will feel heavy, dense, and unpleasant. After you pass through those areas, you might feel things are not quite right or that you don't feel very good. It could be subtle or it could be very obvious like a sudden feeling of being completely drained or angry. That would be a sign you need to get a clearing done. As you may know, I'm a shamanic healer and clearing entity attachments is part of the energy healing work I do. There are probably dozens of ways to remove them, so how I do it is definitely not the only way. But I want to share my process to give you an idea of how I approach healing and what's really involved if this is something you're not familiar with. First of all, the way I learned how to heal is a bit unconventional. It was a combination of directly being taught by spirit, having contact with interdimensional light beings as I shared in episode 3, dreamtime learning, accessing my own cellular memory through song journeys I did for myself and through creative play. Then when the time came, I was put through a massive spiritual initiation where I had to take everything I learned and apply it to life to literally save myself from a really bad situation that brought up all of my suppressed trauma since childhood. It was a really dark time in my life where I almost didn't make it, but I did manage to pass a test and heal myself. That's why I'm here now sharing my healing work publicly and what I've learned about healing in this podcast with you. A couple years ago, I finally made the connection and realized that the way I've been taught to heal by spirit is actually how healing was done in ancient civilizations such as ancient Egypt, Lumeria, and Atlantis. Since we are talking about Atlantis in this episode, that's a culture I'll focus on, but just know that these techniques are pretty much universal across all ancient civilizations, and it's how our ancestors did healing work. In Atlantis, healing was all about frequency, vibrations, and energy. Healers primarily used sound, colors, and sacred geometry to assist patients in rebalancing their own bioenergetic fields. They also used tools made out of crystals and metals like copper to help amplify the natural energies they were working with. Healers had a natural gift of connecting with spirit and that relationship to spirit is where the healing energies came from. This work was done in special healing chambers that were constructed based on sacred geometry, precise mathematics, and with special materials that increase the resonance, so the echoing of sound frequencies inside the chamber. My understanding is that Atlanteans did not use machines like what we are familiar with today. There are a lot of people who believe they had advanced healing machines that look like MRIs, where a person would lay in it, receive some computer-generated frequencies, and then be healed. That doesn't really feel right to me because healing is an inside job that requires a conscious connection to spirit. The magic in healing comes from spirit. Atlantean healers did use technology, but it was etheric spiritual technology made up of sound, colors, and sacred geometry that was powered by the healer's consciousness. Light language is actually an example of this advanced spiritual technology. Now, I can't comment on other people's version of light language, but I know mine is embedded with sound frequencies, colors, and sacred geometry that is designed to promote healing in a multidimensional and energetic way. To the human mind, my light language might just seem like some random foreign words or a nice song, 
but there's actually a lot more to it which your soul can feel and can understand. So healing, health, and well-being in Atlantis was understood as something energetic and spiritual, which is very different compared to modern day medicine where the focus is on biochemistry and the physical body. Now that you have a background on how my healing works, I'm going to walk you through the process of how I would address the problem of entity attachments in someone. I would start with an energy healing session. To remove parasites, I go into the astral realm and meet with the entities to see what they need in order to leave in peace. There are many possibilities as to why they're trapped in the astral realm and feeding off of human energy. A lot of times they are suffering souls who need healing work themselves to move on peacefully. So I'll do that for them or I'll become a beam of divine light, which will act as a doorway for them to travel through and move on to wherever they need to go next. Once the entities are gone, I do a full tune-up of the energy body of the person I'm working on, which involves repairing holes and rips in the aura, balancing the chakras, releasing emotional energy, working on the subconscious mind, dissolving cords, and removing etheric implants. Remember, entities attach to a person usually because that person has unhealed trauma, unprocessed negative emotions, and subconscious negative beliefs. Those things cause damage to the energy body, so I use energy healing work to fix the foundation. Here's something you might find interesting. After I complete the energy healing session, I always suggest the person go on a herbal parasite cleanse. Do you know why? I have found that there is a surprising correlation between being infected with astral parasites and also having a parasitic infection in the physical body. When I first noticed this pattern in people, I thought it was a bit odd, but when I thought about it a little bit more, it actually made a lot of sense to me and here's why. Just like how we have physical laws that govern our material world that we live in, like gravity, there are also universal laws that govern all of reality and the spiritual world. One of those laws is called the law of correspondence, which basically states that what happens around us is a direct reflection of what happens within us. In other words, your physical life is a direct reflection of what goes on in your internal spiritual life experienced by your soul. The two always match up perfectly and mirror each other because that is a fundamental law that reality is built on. So if you're infected with astral parasites that's negatively affecting your spiritual health, then that would also be directly mirrored as a parasitic infection in your body that is also negatively affecting your physical health. By recommending the person go on a herbal parasite cleanse in addition to getting spiritual work, the problem is being tackled from both a physical and spiritual level, which increases the success rate of fully getting rid of it. In addition to the herbal cleanse recommendation, I also prescribe personalized light language frequencies for the person to listen to afterwards. This would be similar to taking oral medicine, but this is sound frequency medicine you consume with your ears. They are tailored to the person's unique energetic signature, so they are a lot more effective than general frequencies. They are intended to support the energetic body, mind, and soul in rebalancing any disharmonies, and they also help anchor the changes permanently into the person's energy field. Remember earlier, I mentioned in Atlantis, healers worked with sound. The healing power of sound is enormous when it's done right. Sound cuts through density and immediately affects the nervous system, emotions, subconscious mind, and the soul. 
You can listen to some of my music or channeled messages to get a feel of the healing frequencies I bring through with my voice. So after that, I do a follow-up spiritual consultation to help the person understand why they are attracting entities and guide them towards healing those problems. Entity attachment is actually a superficial symptom to something much deeper that's happening. Without addressing the deeper root problem, entities will just jump right back in over and over again. By the way, this process can be used for other issues in life as well, and it's not just for removing entity attachments. I use this blueprint to support people in so many different things like health struggles, emotional problems like depression and anxiety, relationship challenges, feeling lost in life, self-worth issues, and limiting beliefs like poverty mindset. All these things in life start with energy, and they also have a spiritual aspect to it. So approaching it from this angle means we address the problem at the source, which provides better results in overcoming it. My approach to healing might seem very progressive to you, but I think with all the amounts of problems we are facing today and the alarming decline in people's health, we really need to open our minds to innovative ideas and be willing to try new things to discover solutions that will help us survive through these challenging times. What I wanna talk about next is the correlation between Atlantis and the world we live in today. Have you noticed that society is making a huge push towards technology, AI, robotics, and science? Earlier, I talked about the fall of Atlantis being related to advanced technology that scientists with low levels of consciousness were experimenting with. As our current society continues to make new scientific advances, would you say that we are also making the same levels of advancement in human consciousness? Personally, I would say no. I think humanity is nowhere near embodying a high level of consciousness. We are certainly working towards that every single day, but we really need to be realistic about things. Just look at how people treat each other in relationships, how they treat themselves, and also what they do to the environment, it's horrendous. And in my opinion, that's not an expression of high levels of consciousness. When it comes to scientists, it's the same, maybe even a bit worse. This is because science focuses mostly on mental intelligence, quantitative data, and physical proof. It does not take into consideration the non-physical, which makes up a majority of our reality. So science has been totally cut off from spirit and has become soulless. Without spirit and the soul, it's not really possible to develop higher states of consciousness. Plus, if you study history, you'll find there are a lot of examples of corruption, immoral behavior, and crimes committed within science. So there's this big push in society to advance science and build technologies from those new discoveries. But there's no push for the development of human consciousness to match that growth. What do you think will happen when we combine low states of consciousness with powerful advanced technology? What do you think that's going to do to society? Are you starting to see the similarities between Atlantis and where we are today. Sadly, history does repeat itself, but that's really because humans tend to be very slow learners. From a higher spiritual perspective, life is seen as a game, and all the problems we experience in life is spirit's way of communicating to us what needs attention, what needs healing, and what lessons our soul came here to master. Things will repeat itself over and over again until the problems are healed and until the lessons are learned. So 
it may appear we are heading in the same disastrous ending as Atlantis, but we're actually being given yet another chance to learn from our past mistakes and do things right this time around. In a way, you can think of it like we're collectively traveling back in time and are being asked by spirit to heal those past traumas so we don't repeat the same disaster. We are going through these things now to heal the past and create a different future. By the way, if your soul has experienced past lives in Atlantis, what's unfolding in the world stage right now may cause you to feel tremendous anxiety, fear, and hopelessness. You might also have repeating nightmares of tsunamis or flooding or feel like the world is ending. Your eternal soul remembers everything and the similarities of what we are going through now is triggering the past trauma your soul acquired from Atlantis, which never got healed. Now, I don't personally feel we're going to repeat history, but it really depends on the choices we make and the actions we take every day collectively. The future is not set in stone and we are creating it as we go along. The problem with believing that the light has won or that darkness has completely taken over so there's no hope is that both of those beliefs put people in a state of passiveness. If you don't take action now, not only are you not choosing the future you want, but someone else is going to make that decision for you and it might not be something you want. It might not even be something that benefits you. If you're wondering what actions you could even take right now when the problems are so massive and the world looks so hopeless, the answer is you just have to take care of your own life. You're not responsible for the world. You're only responsible for your own life. So focus on transmuting darkness in your own life by healing your own traumas and addressing your life problems. Everyone has problems, such as health issues, relationship challenges, financial struggles, fears, and insecurities. All you need to do is heal those things in your life and become the best version of yourself. You do that with inner work and focusing your energy on developing your own spirituality. This will raise your frequency and naturally expand your consciousness. If everyone does this in their own personal life, the combined power of that across humanity would be so great that the world would end up taking care of itself. So if what's unfolding in the world right now is causing you a lot of anxiety and stirs up fear within you, take a deep breath and calm down because everything will be fine. Take your focus off of what's happening in the world and put it on your own life and ask yourself these questions. What are some of the major problems in your life right now? What are some of the things that you can do to start healing those problems? Start asking yourself questions to get the process started. And if you need assistance with this, you can always reach out to me for a private spiritual consultation. In the next episode, I'm going to talk more about unhealed trauma but more specifically, unhealed trauma that your soul has experienced from past lives and how that shows up in your current life. Even if you have no awareness of past lives or believe in reincarnation, it doesn't really matter. Energy is energy. The experiences your eternal soul has across time and space are imprinted into your energy field and in your DNA. They get expressed in different ways through your body and through your life. So if you find yourself struggling with problems that don't make any sense or they just don't seem to go away no matter what you do, there might be a much deeper reason to it that's related to your soul. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.